Welcome to the Youth and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. I would totally tour the world with Luna. Yeah. Oh man, Luna's so cute. Yeah. Cool. And also joining us today is Doterra. I finally appeared in an MLP episode and it only took me nine seasons. Yay. I got a question for you later on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, interesting. <laughs> Anyway, in today's episode, we are going to review season 9 of episode 13, Between Dark and Dawn. In this episode, Celestia and Luna take a bucket list, sister vacation while Twilight and her friends struggle to cover the princess's many royal duties alone. And well, uh, before we head into this very amazing episode, uh, first impressions are in order. Silva, what do you think? <laughs> you said duties. Eh, I did. Well, I thoroughly love this episode. I mean, it's rare we get to see the princesses uh, on display, you know, as characters being the center stage. So it's just fun to see them going around, doing the tour thing, showing the extreme, uh, the extremes of their natures and the uh, polar opposites they represent. At the same time, it's fun to check in on Twilight and Friends having some trouble. The one thing I didn't quite enjoy was uh, Fancy Pants. Mostly because he's in a semi-antagonistic role. Uh, true, true, but, you know, we'll talk about him later on. Yeah. E. Yeah. Anyway, Tara, what about you? Well, I really like, I, I love this episode. Like, I love how we get to see more of Celestia and Luna and actually be more like normal people because most of the time it's either they're off somewhere doing their royal duties or... Yeah, you um, said duties. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> or they're just like, you know, there to save the day, but then they turn out to be useless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Well, Harsh I mean, well, I mean, if anything, though, <laughs> Luna is the best princess. Oh, true, that, true. That. And as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. I, I really love this episode. This episode was one of those wishless episodes where I totally dig it. Uh, but in this one, uh, what I how do I put this? I saw this episode a few times now. So my latest watch for this one was more looking at background certain aspects or certain things that popped out and there's one there's one thing that really popped out to me that i didn't notice the first few times around so yeah this episode was a lot of fun but anyway um if you guys have not watched this episode yet pause here and go do so welcome back and well let's jump right into it uh, we start off the episode with tara you need to explain why you're doing this I got hungry. <laughs> well, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. But you just see, you wanted a little bit of apples, not a whole tree. Hey, we have big stomachs, all right? Have you seen how big we are in Detective Pikachu? Oh, yeah, true that. <laughs> and let's not forget Spike is the breakfast of champions. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but I do love rarity. Spikey, Mikey, no! <laughs> oh, boys. But, but anywho, I'm going to carry on. Uh, Totera just rampaged into Applejack's orchard, uh, wanting to have a meal, and accidentally trying to eat Spike. Twilight Sparkle and her gang come up with a plan to, well, stop the carnage. Uh, Applejack and Pinkie Pie are distractions, while Rarity and Rainbow Dash are to save uh, Spike. And Fluttershy is to talk the Totera down. And suddenly, our two heroes come. Celestia and Luna, blasting laser beams and teleporting the beast away. Yay, that was fun. And Not for me. <laughs> well, tough luck. And <laughs> it, it seems that this is going to be a regular occurrence. Yes, yes. So I'm just going to pause here because after this is going to be intro song and whatnot. So guys, what do you think? Silver? Well, it's just fun to see... Not a hostile threat. I mean, the, the this creature, this this being, hi, Torterra, uh, <laughs> is really just eating. Doesn't even realize it's about to devour a sentient being. Mm -hmm. 
So it's nice to have a not so hostile antagonist. Sometimes an animal is just dangerous because it is unaware. True that. True that. It's like a, it's like a, a whale swimming through the ocean. It may not always, It may bump into something. Not villainous, but you definitely don't want to be the thing bumped into. Oh, true, true, true. And it's also fun just to see Celestine and Luna making things about ten times more difficult than necessary. <laughs> yeah. But, but those two, those two are just having so much fun. <laughs> Spike me while I was like, this is my 47th near-death experience. <laughs> oh, boy. It's Tara, how about you? Well, I do, I mean, first off, I'd like to point out that what if, um, you know, I wasn't trying to eat Spike by accident. Maybe if, what if it was on purpose, you know? Then you failed. <laughs> you failed the most failish way failable. Well, I mean, who could say no to Fluttershy? Yeah. But I do, I do like though how I guess they're finally Celestian Luna finally doing something. Although I do love that one little line where Rainbow Dash is like, "Out of all the times we needed help, they show up for this." <laughs> cool. Because they go through so much big events, and then this is just like a little event with a giant tortoise, or sorry, myself eating trees, and then they show up for that. <laughs> pure goal, pure goal. Emmy worthy, Emmy worthy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but still, th- th- this was a lot of fun. So, anywho, uh, I'm just going to roll through this one because um, we have our heroes like Fluttershy uh, step on a bridge and the bridge kind of broke. Uh, she mentioned something about they should do something about the bridge. And Celestia and Luna jumps into the fray and magics in a new bridge. All the ponies are excited about it. And Fluttershy is just like, okay, this is cool. This is cool. Uh, Rainbow Dash is leading a uh, hike. What was it again? I a Philly's what... Guide Hike. Yeah, Philly Guide Hike. And she's lost in the woods and can't read maps. I feel like that should be a prerequisite for leading a Philly Scout. But at least um, the day is saved with Celestia and Luna Blasting a path to the campsite. Oh, goodness. Why and... do they have to do that, though? They blast some innocent trees. No, and no, as no. someone with a tree on their back, I find that very offensive. Oh, come on. You know their bark is worse than their bite? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stop being a sap. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, then there's Pinkie Pie. Um, it's not really an emergency that needs the princesses, but... Mrs. Cake just says she forgot to deliver or she got to she forgot to bake cupcakes for the Ponyville school and so let's say Luna pops in and bake. I, I do love their epic bro uh not bro hoof but epic uh hoof shake. Yeah, that reminds me of what, Arnold Schwarzenegger and somebody? What was his name? Remember that post? Oh Gen- No, not Danny Glover, Predator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was just awesome. And then with that, uh, Applejack, oh well, let's just say the main six just starts to complain to Twilight about what's going on. Although Rainbow probably has a conniption when Pinky mentions cupcakes. <laughs> yeah. But Twilight is just pondering, like, why are they doing this now? Um, does Celestia not trust me uh, to take care of the question or not? And in reality, Celestia and Luna are adrenaline junkies and they need some outdoor activities. And yeah, Pinkie Pie just suggests why don't you guys take a vacation and create a bucket list. That'll be awesome. And we'll take care of whatever you need to take care of. Can't a lot. So it'll be good practice, yes? You know? And with that, they well start on their vacation. Create a list and whatnot and... Twilight is in charge of the Swan Festival, something Swanning, Fanning. Well, what is it? I think called? it's the Royal Swanning. I think Swan. I don't remember. I Here we go. One sec. Do you have the con- call it the Swan Ray? Uh, I I just want an untitled Goose Game. <laughs> you haven't played that yet. Uh, it's not. I don't have a Switch, and it's not on. Oh Steam. yeah, that's right. I played it. The, <laughs> the royal swanifying ceremony. Oh wow, huh. that's a mouthful. Yeah, and then instead of Me- the geese. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, the geese are looking at this like, "Hey, we're the working class around here. What are these potses doing?" <laughs> oh boy. 
they look they look pretty, so they get more attention, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Oh, that's blatant foul. <laughs> oh, boys. But but anywho, but anywho, I'm gonna pause here. So, guys, what do you think? Um, Tara, what do you think of this? Well, I mean, it is nice that Celestia and Luna are helping uh, Ponyville out, but this is just too much. And I guess they are like super hearing and stuff because there's no way they could hear that Mrs. Cake didn't have enough time to bake for the school. And all of a sudden, they just barge through the door like the Kool Aid Man and be like, <laughs> "We will bake for you." It's like, calm down there. <laughs> Like, did you really have to j- damage the building just to cook cupcakes? Oh yeah. <laughs> but I do like though too that um they're like they're like oh we have we're tired of uh, all this royal stuff we want to go out there and do some adventures and then when Pinkie Pie suggests the bucket list I'm like yeah it's good to, for them to have a vacation although you've had plenty of times to have a vacation when you know King Sombra attacked or other things happened while you guys were relaxing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh boys. What's it about you? Well, I find it funny how Rainbow Dash is continually eating her words. She's the one who said, uh, they almost never help us. Now they're helping us. Stop helping us. <laughs> and though it's comically exaggerated, it does show, I think, why Celestia has often relied on the independence. You don't want someone living life for you. Even if you're having, facing a challenge, at least it's yours to solve. The minute someone takes that away, all the ponies start to feel uncomfortable or frustrated. True, true. And, well, the ponies have been doing this for nine seasons now, and they kind of know how to deal with things. More or less. They still haven't figured out that you can arrive at an event a day in advance to get early. Or earlier still. <gasps> that, that, that's, that's a discussion for another day, my friend. <laughs> the scandal. I, know. I mean, at least it's a good excuse, though, for them to practice their... Um, I guess you could say ruling over Can- uh, Cantilla. What am I saying? Ruling over Equestria. <laughs> oh, sure, that, sure, that. But anywho, I'm going to carry on. So we see Celestia and Luna getting ready to go on a vacation, uh, doing the bucket list, packing and whatnot. And first trouble is they don't agree on what to do. Uh, Celestia wants an adventure. Luna wants a, a rela- <laughs> some r and r and they'll they'll compromise. They'll compromise. That's what sisters do, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So uh, they start packing, and Luna has the perfect outfit for this. She ports out and ports in with a Hawaii jacket or a Hawaii shirt that will make Max Payne proud. Yes, yes. And yeah, why? Well, with that, Celestia brings out some camping gear. Yay. So they they are in it. Like they are hundred percent in it to win it. Yay. And with that they the mean six send them off on a vacation and Luna and Celestia wants Twilight to raise the sun and moon. Remember the last time when she did that? Woo So with that they send her off and yeah, chaos starts for the main six. Yes. They need to entertain some swans. Yay. So, with that, the princesses go on their vacation. And I do love that the residents of Equestria still treat them like celebrities. Like, oh my god, there's a princess. Ah, I'm going to faint. She look in my general direction and stuff. And with that, we get our first song, which is really awesome. A nice uh, awesome vacation song. Yay. Uh, I'm just going to pause here. Guys, what do you think? Silver. Oh. Vacation I'll ever wanted. So there actually was a, a rule stated by the production staff at Everfree Northwest uh, 2019. Mm-hmm. If you get a song in the first act, you are going to hear a sad version of it in the third. Oh. You know, it's upbeat, it's happy, it's energetic. So, of course, everything must go wrong. Uh-huh. Okay. And yes, I do. I do recall when Twilight raised the raised the moon and lowered the sun. Basically, the equestrian calendar got ro- uh, royally messed up, and I'm sure the tides have still not settled. <laughs> I'm sure equestria doesn't work that way. <laughs> but do you realize the scandal we witnessed this episode? Oh, was it? 
We, this is the first time we've seen the princesses out of their regalia. <gasps> Gasp. But they're, they're exposing their, ba- their bare hooves to the world. Yep, but they are covered. They are covered. They are covered, but... Well, Celestia is going to get even more scandalous during the uh, song mm-hmm. as she goes diving in a bikini. Really now? Ooh. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. So, and again, it's fun to see uh, the contrast. I mean, uh, for starters, goth Lestia and 80s rock Luna. Is it this one? I thought it was in the second half. I thought that was part of the uh, music. It nope, was wait. in the second I'm half, get, uh, in the reprise. I'm, I'm getting... Okay, sorry, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. <laughs> but whatever the case, uh, it's just fun to see them waltz around. Oh, look, it's Kepper! I know! I was surprised! Hello, Kepper! And, okay, in all honesty, I, I've seen... I, I've tracked this part multiple times just to see the finer details. And the walk cycle for Trixie and her wagon was cool. Uh, then you see Silverstream with another hippogriff, and I'm just gonna say that could be her cousin or whatever it is. Like, it's just a random hippogriff to be there. You know what I mean, uh, what's wrong with random hippogriffs? I ask you. Yeah. Do you have something against random hippogriffs? No, sometimes you need to make sense because you put Silverstream, and the most logical other character to put would be Terramar, but you put it in a random character. Like, wait, what? I find that species is Norman. Yes, Norman. I'm I'm offended. Uh, no comments. <laughs> but yeah, K- K- Capper's there, and we get to see the flame and flame needing a ride. <laughs> oh, we'll see. We see Gabby and Gilda. I-, I just love this intro to the song. That's just so awesome. Though I find it funny. There's a brief scene where Celestia is talking about being imprisoned in a castle, basically being all cooped up. And a part color slams in front of her like a uh, cage. Yeah. And just like, and I just think to myself, wow, even her castle is trying to kidnap her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but this, uh, this first song was awesome. I, I love it a lot. And Tara, what about you? Well, I do. Okay, so I'm just going to rewind back from the song because I do like how Celestia and Lunar getting more of that sister bond. Like, even like back at the. Um, I don't know if it was season eight or seven, the, um, the royal problem mm-hmm. where they switch. I kind I like how they're not focusing on just them being all royal and smiling and waving, and they're having different emotions instead of just always being happy. And I like that Celestia and Luna are actually being normal and sisterly love and stuff like that. And now to the song, I actually like the song. And usually I don't talk about songs, but I like the beat of it. And you know, it has a catchy tune. <laughs> true that. True that. And yeah, this song is memorable for me because I've been listening it on loop for a while now, ever since, you know. Okay, disclaimer here. I, I got the version that's uh, not supposed to be listened to the general public and I, I listened to it and it's really good quality. And if Hasbro were to release this on an album like what they did with the previous song, I would totally buy it. But Hasbro, get on your game. What happened to you, man? That's Hasbro. They're like, sorry, folks, there's too much money to be made from the next series. Ta-da! Release the album for this song. God dang it. Uh, but still, but still, we, we get to see a lot of contrast between Celestia and Luna, what they really want to do. Uh, Celestia wants to have an adventure. She wants to ride a roller coaster. Uh, Luna wants to listen to the opera or watch a play and, and so on. And I think Celestia and Twilight's mom will get along really well. But anywho, let's carry on. And talking about Twilight's mom, we get to see Twilight having a problem with royal duties. And... Hey, again, duty. Yeah. <laughs> and she, she got no idea what the royal swanifying is. And comes here, come, here comes in uh, Fancy Pants, Jet Setter, and... Who now? I, I forget, upper Crust. Yeah, Upper Crust. So... They're here to help the princess with the, what you call this, event. But Twilight turns them down, saying that she could do it herself. And I think here, Fancy Pants just got offended by the declaration of, well, not needing help. 
And yeah, I'm I'm mixed with this one. I, I'm really mixed with this one. But let's just push on till I ask for your guys' opinions on this. So with that, we get to see the princesses having fun again. Going zip lining and whatnot, having pictures taken. Um, that's what Celestia wanted to do. Now it's Luna's turn. And Luna's uh, thing that she wants to do is see the process of how a letter is sent and delivered and received. Yay! We get to see our favorite walleye mare. And yay! <laughs> uh, this is done. <laughs> Much awesomeness. Then, you know, this is going to be a ping pong match between what Celestia and Luna wants. And I think here we get a song or the reprise for the previous song we get. And Luna wants to do some face painting and experience the 80s. Or is it 90s? Oh, I forgot. Probably 80s. While Celestia wants nothing to do with it and become goth. And yeah, they don't agree and they argue and... Yeah, now, now yeah, they're, they're splits. They're, they're not having fun. And Twilight, on her part, is just not having fun too because she got no idea what's going on. Fancy Pants comes in saying that the swan's complaining, the trash is on the street, the royal carpet just can't carpet things. And yeah, everybody's in a tizzy. We come back to Celestia and Luna having a picnic, a quiet picnic, and they start to argue. And words were said, and yeah, they're not doing this together. They're splitting up. Oh no. And I'm going to pause here now. Guys, what do you think? Uh, Tara? Well, if I'm going to get a little nitpicky, the one, this one part where Twilight kind of declines Fancy Pants offering to help, and Fancy Pants is like, well, all right then, like, you could, I mean, Fancy Pants, you could at least say that you, you've you always helped Celestia and Luna right there and then. But he basically goes off as like, no, I'll let this play through and wait until I can tell them, hey, yeah, we are the, we help them out and stuff. We help them out with their royal duties. Yeah, you said duties. I was waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> but And then I like how after Pinky Pie goes through the list, everyone just gives Twilight the, the stare of being like, really? You declined his offer and now we have to deal with this ourselves? And it's like, yeah, you kind of messed up there, Twilight. <laughs> True that. And then, you know, Celestia, now we get to see more of the sisterly love, except Celestia being, you know, so energetic, wanting to do zip lining and stuff, and Luna wants to do some stuff that's very calm, like uh, going through the mail. And, I mean, I kind of relate to Luna on how mailing works, because I used to wonder, you know, how is the shipping handled uh, and stuff like that? But now I work at a shipping company, so I know how it's handled. <laughs> Tortera, I didn't know you give in into the shipping. No, no, no. I handle the shipping. <laughs> Sweetie Bloom's in charge of sh the actual shipping. I can't uh, embrace the shipping. Ship <laughs> it all. And and then, like, I, I don't know what goes through Celestia's mind at times, because there's that one scene where Celestia's like, hey, have you heard that ponies never travel down here? And then they get trapped. And I was like, I imagine why. <laughs> And then, now, I know this is clearly not a reference to Steven Universe, but I mean, the little tattoo or paint marks that Luna has on her cheeks is literally diamonds, and it has yellow, blue, and pink. Aesthetics, I mean, 3D. <laughs> I know it's aesthetics. I'm just, I'm just, like, you know, being, being me. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think I'll end it there. I don't want to go too far in. All right, all right. And Silver, what about you? Putting the ass in aesthetics. Eh. Eh, eh, eh. Well, okay. Uh, with <coughs> oh, excuse me. With fancy pants and uh, the royals, well, the elitists. Mm -hmm. Twilight is foolish to to decline them because she's used to tackling everything herself or as a group. But they came in with the with sort of the assumption that they would have this, that even though there's someone new in charge, it's they who will. Uh, assume responsibilities immediately Whoa. and that shows some haughtiness on their part which i'm actually a little sorry to see fancy pants when he was introduced was one of the first stallions who wasn't immediately antagonistic towards the main six it, that so i thought of him as the best stallion in canterlot sorry shining armor <laughs> but now that's that title has been slipping more and more as he's 
been presented as more prideful than anything uh, and not always helpful. So sometimes that ang the anger is justified, but his conduct is still much too entitled. Probably, probably. Uh, I, 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 but I still feel like Fancy Pants just wants to teach Twilight a lesson, but yeah, the the way he did it was a bit antagonistic. But we got no idea what's really going on because Twilight is a bit prideful. Well, she's investing a great deal of her own sense of self in this, which is her recurring flaw. Mm -hmm. Again, the somber song. You know, it's, the rule comes into play. It's on full display here. You had a happy and upbeat melody. Now you must witness the despair. Oh, yeah. D, D, D. Yeah, it seems to happen a lot. Yeah, that is so true. That's so true. But hey, uh, at least we, we get to see some cool things like Gothlestia, uh, retro cool 80s Luna. So yay. But uh, though so there, there was a critique uh, I read online about uh, Celestian Luna episodes, rare as they are. Uh, the the complaint being, whenever they get together, all they do is is antagonize one another. They always are just in opposition. But that's normal. Well, okay, one that's normal for family. Yeah. In general, two, it's I think it's important to note the the dynamics of Celestia and Luna. They are meant to be polar opposites in every regard. In fact, the one thing that is an opposite, and I'm I was genuinely surprised. Is that one of them wasn't uh, a male? Sure, yeah. You know, brother and sister rather than two sisters. But I think that's because this show is aimed at young women. But you know, I I have a feeling that if this show runs the course that it ran now, like it started with what we have now, it could be Celestia would be um, a male character, while Luna would be a female character as she is now. Because that would be, well, interesting. I mean, that would be different from the norm. Really, I would think it'd be the opposite. Celestia would remain her uh, female self, uh, and Luna would be, uh, what is it, Rule 64? Is it 64? Gender swap? Yeah, some, something like that. I forgot. But yeah, I, I, I do, well, it's either or in this kind of situation. Depends on what Lauren wanted to, well, do in the very beginning. But you know, having a male Luna would be much awesome. But that's beside the point. Well, although if it were male Celestia, when the two sisters formed the Tao at the start of this series, the apparently the white part is meant to represent masculine and the dark part feminine. Well, it's sort of funny. You talk about the king archetype, which is a which is very much about establishing systems and order and uh, process, and Celestia has been doing that. So in a lot of ways, she is fulfilling both. She's been both the king and the queen archetypes, depending on the situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's just interesting in terms of uh, anal analys <laughs> analysis, analytics. And of course, it's just fun to see Twilight throw fancy pants and... Okay, Jet Set and Upper Crust, they had that coming for a long time. Oh, yeah. Just like, sorry, you were mean to rarity. Yeah. Bye! Yeah. But I noticed that nobody's really talking about the fight between... Or have I not reached there? No, I did. Uh, the fight between Celestia and Luna. And that's an offshoot of there being polar extremes. They've reached that point, especially in travel. It's not that different from uh, Road to Friendship, where you just have that blow up. Oh, true that, true that. But this one, hurtful words were said because, oh man, like, Somehow it hit too close to home where they just wanted to be alone and like they have been alone for almost a thousand years. And yeah, man, like I, I think some words needed to be said, air out and whatnot. I mean, not to mention they used their royal cantalot voice. Yeah, true that, true that. Oh, by the way, fun fact, uh, Luna hates cucumbers. I wonder if she likes pickles. I'm the same way. I... I don't enjoy a cucumber, but pickle it? Oh, I'm in heaven. Actually, I'm in the same way. I, I don't really like cucumbers. I'm 50-50. But the, the only reason why I noticed this is just because I was looking at the clip and then I saw, hmm, what is Saluna doing with her sandwich? And what did she throw away? Re rewind, look back again. Oh, she threw away cucumbers. <laughs> 
That was just fascinating to me. <clears throat> oh, but anyhow, let's carry on. So, the main six tries to do the soiree. And let's just say that Fancy Pants is just there looking. And Twilight comments, how does Celestia do this? And Fancy Pants says, she doesn't. She delegates. And after hearing this, uh, Twilight delegates. Yay. Uh, Rainbow Dash asks this person to do stuff. Rarity asks this person to do that. And Fluttershy asks, after the release, to do crowd control. Okay. And Applejack comments that there's still trash in the street. What do? And Pinkie Pie calls upon Totera. Totera? I'm concerned. Concerned about what exactly? You're eating trash. We, yeah, we need to talk about your diet. You need more greens and less spike. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I know you like I junk mean, food, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just about to say that, too. <laughs> I mean, can you really blame me, though? They they didn't want me to eat the apples off the tree, so I was still hungry. Yeah, man, okay, man. Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, thinking about that, you I get mean, it. If you, I mean, at least they covered the scent with some fruity tootie spray. You think? But anywho, um, I, I guess Twilight... Is doing awesome because we don't hear from her until a while now. So I'm just going to speed right through this one. Um, the two sisters do their own vacation. Uh, Luna gets to relax on the beach and gets sunburn. And the nurse just mentions, uh, don't you put sunscreen on? And Luna just says, or oh, yeah, comments that, wait, is that a thing? While Celestia jumps off a plane, she's skydiving, so that's fun, but she's doing it alone, and she's kind of missing the whole sisterly bonding thing. And then she goes to the forest, and suddenly, El Pollo comes around and scares the bejesus out of her. Chicken! <laughs> so does that mean she'd be scared of you, Silver? <laughs> That's right. That's why she only puts up a poultry resistance. <laughs> uh, but well, I mean, if her castle has a mind of its own, I'm pretty sure it'll keep you out. <laughs> You'd like to think so. Oh boy! <laughs> but uh, but I know the ways of feng shui. <laughs> but I do um, enjoy Celestia's line, where usually Luna do the uh, navigation and also scares away the chicken. <laughs> like, wait, what, Celestia? Why are you afraid of chickens? Well, she's not the only one that's scared of chickens. There's so much to unpack with this one. My goodness. Well, I mean, come on. Twilight's afraid of ladybugs and quesadillas. Yeah, but there's so there's there's an explanation with the ladybugs. Quesadillas, she mentions, is so cheesy. So there's a bit of explanation with this one. Uh, you know what? Discord. Yes, Discord. Mm-hmm. Discord. That's my explanation. Anywho, um, as the two sisters um, look through the map, they go to Mount Filimanjaro. I love this show. That's really the name? Yep. <laughs> so they decide to go to the top, to the peak, to see the sunrise and moon set. Something like that. And... They reconnect and forgive each other. Yay. So, they see the sunrise and moon not set. And uh, they moon each other. Yay. <laughs> what the? So, anywho, um, they decide like, okay, Twilight's having problems right now. Let's go home and help her. Yay. And with that, episode ends. So, Silver, what do you think, man? Well, first off, I think somebody was paying special attention to a uh, art style and playmat that came out. Oh, uh, it's titled "Warm Vibes," which shows both Celestia in a swimsuit and Luna sunburned. Oh, uh, that's uh, Pixel Kitties! Yay! Yes, so Pixel Kitties may have may have influenced an episode, and congrats! <laughs> Yay! Much awesomeness, but still, but uh, one, it's. 
It's funny when the world is trying to tell you a message, such as when the sisters keep seeing sisters at play. <laughs> Even, and this is rather curious, uh, a pony parachuting with a picture of the two royal sisters on her parachute. Or just like, did they pay copyright for that? I feel like that's appropriation of their identities. Uh, yeah, all, all, all proceeds will go to the crown. Now, with Celestia and the chicken, the thing is... This show loves to have a character have a phobia, but it can't be anything dark or traumatic or, or just all around awful. It's got to be fun and silly. So, of course, Celestia is just arbitrarily afraid of chickens. Why not? <laughs> true that, true that. Why not, indeed? I mean, it's a character quirk. It gives Celestia a bit of a quirk that's very interesting. And I just think, aha, Torterra, you may have gotten a spot in this episode, but I am the one who haunts Celestia's dreams. <laughs> I mean, that's true, actually. Silver does beat me to it. So, Silver, <laughs> would you say that you're the fowl that haunts Celestia in the night? You're the poultry that gunks her hair with... <laughs> uh, I got no idea how Darkwing does it. it. With a coli, I am Silver Quill. <laughs> Uh, let's get dangerous then. <laughs> Have you seen a he's not eating trash? <laughs> oh, true that, true that. Uh, but there are way, what do you think? Well, I, okay, I, there is one part I can relate to Luna, and that's with the sunburn, because <laughs> even though I put sunscreen on myself during the summertime, I still get burned. I burn easily. I'm weak to fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need. I mean, I'm part grass type here. <laughs> you need SPF 1 million. <laughs> I'm the same way. I feel like we have so much in common, Silver. <laughs> yes, we, we both like pickles, we don't like cucumbers, and we burn easily. Oh. <laughs> Yay. Oh, boys. And I and I do like how, in the end, Celestia and Luna talk about, you know, it's hard being the little sister, but it's also hard being the big sister. And, you know, they make up for it, have a nice little sister bond, and I like how it ended. Yeah, that was, that was sweet, that was sweet. And with that, well... Um, let's go to final thoughts. Silver? Well, this is just a treat to see. I mean, uh, it sets the stage for Celestia and Luna's retirement and Twilight to assume the throne. This all ties into the to the finale. But it's it lets the sisters be less than perfect. It lets them be uh, characters with different views, different enjoyments. And I, and I really love how they express it. Celestia has been the noble, composed, and regal viewer, so now she wants to just cut loose. Luna, meanwhile, has been distant from the rest of Equestria, both by banishment and just by her, her job. So, of course, she wants to take in the culture and see the mechanics of this land. She's just thrilled to know others. And so, uh, I, I love the contrast. And it, with these characters, it will always be about contrast. By their very nature, Celestia and Luna are meant to represent uh, extreme opposites. And yet, there's a love that binds them. So, it's a lot of fun. And uh, I will say, getting to see Twilight uh, freaking out as she tries to, to work the dial with their power. Twilight freakouts are going to become a rare thing, so enjoy them while they can. Take their mean faces. So true. Although, introducing that, that dial to control the sun and the moon. Still makes me wonder, who's going to be monitoring Equestria's dreams? Because hmm. they're putting all this on Twilight, and while she is learning to delegate, there are some things you don't just say, okay, Pinky, you're in charge of Equestria's dreams for the night. No! Oh, God, no. Oh, no, 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 no. And Equestria is shocked by his epidemic of cupcake dreams. <laughs> Oh, boys, but, yeah. Uh, is that all, Silva? That'll do all it. All right, then. Tara, what about you? I really love this episode from the beginning to the end. Like I said, there was that little nitpicky part where Twilight declined fancy pants, and he was kind of being a little villain there. And at the end, he's like, oh, yeah, we helped them out. He's like, why did you carry it on anyways? You could have told us right from the beginning so we didn't have to clean up all this mess. But I do like, though, how Celestia and Luna, they, they start off with being so happy, and then later on they get into a fight, and then they make up for it. And I kind of relate to them. I mean, I didn't I didn't point this out because I kind of forgot about it. Back when um, um, 
shoot, I forget the name of the episode. We talked about it. Episode 200. Oh, uh, what was it again, Silva? I forgot. It's like the heist one. Oh. Yes, Sparkle 7. That's it. Because it, it, you can totally relate. Because I, I, um, I'm the youngest brother. Like, I have an older brother, and I'm the younger one. And back then, we got into a couple of fights. And, no, you know, no brother relationship or, you know, basically no sibling relationship at all is perfect. We had a few fights back then. But then as we got older, we, lo- we made up for some stuff. And we don't even fight a lot as we do now. Yeah. Wait, that came out <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I, I understand. We don't fight a lot as we used to. Uh-huh. I understand, I understand, I understand. Hello, Sarah. Yep, that's all. All right, and as for me, this episode, I love it. It's the best episode ever. And it started out pretty normal. Like, okay, well, what's going to be this one? Okay, a big giant turtles attacking uh, Applejack's farm. Okay, what's going to happen? Wait, what? Celestia Luna pops in. <laughs> okay, this this is going to be fun, and we get to see Celestia Luna fun. And this is what I really wanted from the early days, like. More Celestian Duna, please. But hey, uh, we, we get them now. And I just love the interaction between the two of them. You can clearly tell in the VA's uh, way of talking because uh, Celestia has this more casual tone in her voice. Uh, more, you know, like just more casual, more free. While Luna is trying to control her tone. Uh, she's still trying to use uh, old, ye old English and whatnot, but still sticking to the time. And she likes the process of how things are done. And this is an interesting fact because we get to see it later on in a comic that we will review soon enough. So I, I just find this whole episode very entertaining. I would say that this is high up on the list of favorite episodes. And yeah, interaction characters, yeah, much more fun, much more fun. The fancy pants thing, I don't know, man. Like, I can totally understand, but, ah, man, he, he, I don't know. It could be egos that's talking for both of them. Twilight not accepting his help because she wants to prove something for herself. While Fancy Pants is just like, oh, not using us. Okay, no problem, no problem. We, we, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Overall, I, I love this episode. I love this episode. Anything to add on, you guys? No? Yes? No. As as you say, I too love this episode. It's just a lot of fun to see. All right. Did I know it? Did I? There are you? No? Yes? No, not much. Just I love the episode too. <laughs> All right. Then. Okay. Anyway, uh, with that, our review ends. So, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, it's time to switch over the comics. And if you want to talk about sister dynamics, we're about to have uh, The Ultimate Feud in Nightmare Nights, issue number one. Oh, that's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. And, yeah, um, all I can say is just wait for next week for us to review this one because it's a lot of fun. That's all I have to say. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbsradio.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at DMBS Show, And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, you can find me in a variety of places. You can find me on uh, Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can find me on uh, Patreon under MLP Silver Quill and Kofi under just Silver Quill. And if you do a search on YouTube, you can find me under Silver Quill or After the Fact, I Shall Appear. And on Wednesdays, you can find me on Equestria Daily, posting either a comic or an editorial. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Silver, how's the coffee doing for you? <laughs> Not much activity just yet. Uh, all right. But then I haven't, I haven't really advertised it much. Yeah. Same here, man. Like, uh, my coffee is kind of dead. <laughs> Uh, boys. But anyway, Tara. Well, I don't have coffee. <laughs> uh, that's both the coffee site and I didn't drink, I didn't drink coffee. Uh, but where can the good people find you, man? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortera1324. Or they could just do a simple Google search, and I'm pretty sure I'll be on all platforms. And they can also find me on my Patreon page. Awesome, awesome, awesome. 
And well, also please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and also stitch the radio. Also like our Facebook page and you can also catch us on com. You could also support the show if you want to. We also do have a Patreon page and that's patreon.com slash MBS show. We have your support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Matthew Knight, Master of Lag, Tristan, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I'm Cecil Verquil. And I am Torterra. And we'll just get you next week with another fun episode of the Yes Show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. Uh, sisterly love. That's something, right? Gay? Until you pull out a chicken, then Celestia will get scared. At least it's better than the love Torterra has for eating garbage. I'm trash. <laughs> <laughs>